All right, so this uh, vehicle had come in for uh, no communication problem and also supposedly dying on the road and uh, reduced power message would come on the dashboard. What is going on, everybody? Brian Mann here, hands-on auto training. Do you ever have cars that you don't totally fix or you're not 100% sure what happened to get the thing going? Well, I have uh, one that I'm going to share with you. I'm actually going through a lot of my video archives. I have hundreds of gigs of video that never made it to YouTube or anywhere because either A, I didn't uh, get uh, the completion on the car, I didn't get to proceed, the customer ran out of money or whatever, or B, uh, I just don't know what fixed it. Like weird things happen sometimes and that's part of the thing or part of the game that many people don't talk about on YouTube or we don't share much. We have vehicles that, uh, you know, we don't have a result for or a res resolution for that we're 100% concrete on. So here we have a 2007, I believe, uh, Pontiac G6. This is August of 2022. Let's take a look. When I got in here, we had no communication. Um, Zero communication with the scan tool, nothing would communicate. Uh, the CAN bus had some really weird resistance. Guys, all I did was play around right over here in this connector. Uh, the CAN bus goes through here and my communication came back. So to be clear here, guys, I did not have any high speed communication. That's six and 14 at the DLC. We did not have any communication with the body control module, vehicle communication interface module, which I don't think this one had. Uh, the power steering module, brake control module, engine control module. We didn't have communication with any of these modules, so we want to find an easy spot to divide and conquer. In this instance, I ended up looking at this connector 206. I figured this would be a nice place to split the network up, and I disconnected 206, and I had to find 206, actually. And believe it or not, uh, going into the master uh, connector list here, you can see we've got 206. It says here it's an IP harness to body, left side of IP access panel that's what that says what i had had trouble with is trying to find 206 uh like this going to c206 in all data it didn't really come up with a uh, good location of it it just says here you go this is what it, what the connector looks like going into diagrams and locations i could not find this connector so even if you go here and hit connectors connectors by number it did not come up if you go to c200 you see here we have 207 and C214. 207 is close to 206, uh, but it doesn't come up here. You can see here in this uh, little picture they don't have 206. So I did find this uh, connector in the instrument panel. I disconnected it. I checked my resistance both ways, and I had 120 ohms both ways. So I think the problem might have been in the connector. I inspected the terminals, didn't see anything. We put it back together, and communication came back. Play around right over here in this connector. Uh, the CAN bus goes through here, and my communication came back. I was very baffled by that. When the communication did come back, I did have uh, the only code in the PCM was a code for a camshaft position sensor for the intake. Um, and this camshaft sensor was like not even installed all the way. It was partially out. The bolt was semi-stripped. So I thought maybe it just had a bad air gap with the uh, camshaft. So I messed around with trying to tighten this thing up and I had no signal on it, so it's stuck at 7 tenths of a volt all the time. So I went ahead and put this new camshaft position sensor in and it seems like it, uh, it got all fixed up and it was running good. Every once in a while, uh, well as you see here, we have a rat's nest here. I gotta dig into this and see if we have any wires that are compromised. Every once in a while this will pop a misfire on cylinder number one. So just sit and idle, it'll miss like uh, three or four times in a row for cylinder number one. It runs great under our load. The fuel trims actually look really good. I haven't caught anything with the fuel trims on it. So I'm going old school here to see if we might have a valve sealing issue. If we get a big bounce in our needle here when this thing hiccups and misfires, uh, we'll know. It'll, it'll misfire like three times in a row, bum, 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 and then it'll clear up and be fine. I really think it's a valve sealing issue. Uh, could be some other thing on this thing, but uh, I'm going to try and catch it in the act, as you see here. I do have the mass airflow sensor disconnected down there. You can see that's all disconnected, not hooked up right now. Waiting to see this thing hiccup. Now this vehicle has been on the road for quite a while. The customer called me months later saying it was still working and I haven't heard from it since. So if you guys have any questions, comments, or concerns, let me know what you think. Also take a look at that vacuum gauge. I was thinking my vacuum was a little bit low at idle here. This is with the mass airflow disconnected, which shouldn't have any effect on the actual pumping of air through the engine, uh, the way it breathes. What I mean is like I was, you know, a good running old school car. We're expecting what, 18 inches or so. 
and uh, this was definitely on the lower side. I do believe because it's a variable cam timing vehicle, that's probably what's going on there. This thing ran great down the road. As I said, fuel trims were spot on, plenty of power, and this thing didn't miss a beat for a long time. So if you guys have any questions, comments, or concerns, please do let me know. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.